Hello friends from the Soldovia cabin. We are here to bring you along for some end of summer family fun. So behind me is the cabin, if you are unfamiliar. Several of you have had questions about whose cabin this actually is. This is Mark's parents' cabin. They built it back in the 70s with several other families, but those families have moved on and it is now just in Mark's family. It is not our cabin, but we are grateful to be able to come here and to be able to enjoy it during the summer and we help upkeep it. Mark is always doing some sort of project to upkeep it, so that it can be here as long as possible. So we're going on a family walk. We're hoping we can find some blueberries and maybe some mushrooms. Hedgehog mushrooms are in season right now. We are on the cusp of fall. So Mark is very into mushroom hunting. Oh, here is a jellyfish that washed up on the beach. That's a big one. I also just found this crab shell which at first, when we started coming here, I used to think, oh man, that's a dead crab. But then I was taught that, well, no, there's nothing in it. You see how it opens up like this? So when a crab gets too big for its shell, it crawls out and that's what's known as a soft shell crab. And it goes and hides and puffs itself up with water until a new shell grows. And so this is just the carcass that it left behind and it didn't die. Isn't that so cool? It just opens up and slides itself out. Once I learned that, I just was amazed. It just blows my mind every time I see a little crab shell. Lots of jellyfish on the beach today. Two nights ago, there was a pretty big storm, so they must have gotten washed up. Oh, you found a piece of sea glass? Oh, pretty. Add it to the collection. Later in this video, we hope to take you to what we call Sea Glass Beach, uh, where we find the majority of our sea glass here. And, oh, I just found a piece. We sometimes find a little bit on our beach here. And then we have an art project planned, so hopefully that will... <laughs> Thousands of pieces of sea glass. Yep, we have found thousands of pieces. Hopefully that will be later in this video. All right, we've reached the sandy part of the beach. It never ceases to amaze me how each section of the beach is so different with rocks and, uh, oh, Everett made us a sand angel. Right here is it. It's beautiful. Oh, Finding some berries under? Yeah. Taking some lots. Hard to see here. Four. You have four? Okay. Well, I didn't pick those for you. <laughs> no. Okay, I gotta taste some. Oh, Watermelon berry. Wow, they're huge. Salmon berry. So this is a berry picker right here. It's got this comb right here. And you stick it right on a on a bush right here. And what it does is it, um, you, you kind of stick try. this comb up there. And you pull back. All the berries fall off right there. I'll and try. you go, and they fall into a oh. little reservoir there. It can right make there. berry picking go a lot quicker, but you do get a bunch of leaves in it and I then you have right to here. sort them out. But the quantity that you can get is much okay. higher. I got a handful. Look at this. I'm going to eat them all. Everett, come over here. I'm Yummy snack. Our neighbors here have some awesome berry picking spots from where some trees fell over in a storm a few years ago and they're kind enough to let us come pick. The traditional spots that we've gone in the past haven't been as good the last couple years so this has just been kind of the sweet spot. Look at this and this. This is like the biggest one we have down, ever had. Down the hatch. Yeah, down three berries down the hatch. So we're calling these blueberries but these are actually Alaska huckleberries. Huckleberries grow on these bigger plants. Blueberries grow really low on the tundra. So these are huckleberries and they're amazing. Today we're just picking enough for a snack and maybe for some blueberry pancakes tomorrow. But as we get closer to the end of the week, we'll come back and pick a couple gallons to take home for the winter. Because wow. there's years that we have come down and there have been zero berries. So this is just so exciting. In Alaska, blueberries tend to be about six to eight dollars a pound at Costco. And so I only buy them a few times a year. 
if that, if I, I don't know. I just only buy them for special occasions. And then we come here and we just gorge. Oh, these are just beautiful. They're so big. So these bushes here are called salmon berries. Let's see if we can find some. They're very pretty, pretty color. They don't have as good a flavor. These I let them look like one of my babies. Okay. Everett, right up here. Look oh. at this one right here. That's a grown up. There you go. See that? Show the camera. And that's a grown up. That's a grown up salmon berry. Let uh -huh. me show it. Let me show it. I want to show the color. They get this really pretty. Oh, yes. And Beautiful. Black. I want to have to try a black too. Yeah. Why it's called a salmon berry? Sometimes there's yellow ones too. Why are they called salmon berries? Because they look like salmon eggs. All right. Yep, they do. All right. We've had our berry fix for a little bit. Now we're going to go look for some mushrooms, I guess. Come up into the forest. But we are looking for hedgehog mushrooms. All right, so you can, they're kind of hidden down here in the ferns. If I pick these ferns, you can see these are called hedgehog mushrooms. And the reason is if you look underneath here, uh, instead of gills, they have this little fur, like a hedgehog on their gill. And these are edible. These are edible. They have a lot of water in them. So you got to cook them a while to kind of cook out the water, but they're edible and they're good. And, and they're easy to identify, which is good because you can see they clearly don't have the gills. They got this hedgehog pattern on the bottom, so that's nice too. You're not gonna misidentify them with something else. Can we eat them right now? Uh, no, you need to cook them. All these mushrooms you should cook first. Get it out. Everett! Here, wait, just let me get my knife and I'll cut off the bottom. You're exploring? Here, look at this, huh? It's like right here against this log. There's some growing down in here. Hunter, you've got some beautiful purple lips. Do I? Natural lip balm. Another thing we can forage along here is this thing called beach spinach. It's also called lovage or lamb's quarter. Lovage grows here along the beach. There's some lovage right there. There's a lot that grows over here, all along here. Very salty. I hate it. Spinach type. This is also a big place for shells. Along where we have our beach, there's not a lot of shells, but right here gets a ton of shells. Um, Each beach gets such different wave action and just different treasures. We have a beach that we go to for sand dollars, sea glass, shells. Different areas have different treasures. All right, Everett and I are gathering some shells for one of our favorite games here on the beach. Break the shells in me. That's the name of the game? Yeah. Okay, I got some. Okay, Everett's setting up his final shells. Oh, way back there. Okay. Woo! Oh, any oh. More? I'm trying to. Oh, I'm trying to get that one up on top. Oh, where? Nope. Missed. Have you got the really big point one? Oh, I got it! Oh. Everett, what do you say when it's, you have to go reset up the shells? Ceasefire. Ceasefire, when we're setting up new rocks. Three, two, one, war! Bennett came and joined our game, but he's really good at this game. He's been playing for years. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was a good smash. It's about to be low tide. We don't have any super low tides this time for going out and doing tide pooling. So they're getting on their suits. These are seven millimeter wetsuits so that they can go out in the about 42 degree water we have here in Alaska. The water is about 50 degrees. 50 uh, now? Yeah, it's, it's, it's risen up to about 50 degrees. Oh. It's on the, on, the on the fish finder thing yesterday. Nice. Yeah, so nice and it, it'd be nice and tropical. Still too cold for me. So we'll see what they come back with. The little boys and I have been painting rocks. So Weston got this mosaic sticker book from his grandma and grandpa Ham for his birthday. Um, so you have these cards and then you do the stickers. Well, this has inspired me in my rock drawing. After I did this whale last night, inspired me for a whole new way to make some 
rock art. So I made this whale using these paint pens. Pat, one of you guys sent us. Yeah, one of you guys sent these to us, so thank you. And then I made this octopus. I'm loving the mosaic look. And then I just did a jellyfish, so kind of fun. Bye, boys. Bye, Mom. Have fun. So they take the small boat when they are going free diving because it's much easier to get in and out of and they get in closer to shore, they can get into rocky pinnacles, places where it's kind of tricky to get in with the big boat. The small raft is much easier and so that's why they take that one when they do most of their free diving. So they're gonna go, there's quite a few big waves out in the main bay today so they're just gonna stay close to shore here in Soldovia Bay and go see what they can find. So two winters ago, Mark started watching videos about free diving, watching other people dive in Alaska, watching people dive all around the world, but in places where the water was cold and it kind of opened up his eyes to what was possible. So he watched the videos all through the winter. By spring, he was ready to order all the equipment. He came to me and honestly, I was like, no. Cause it was something that I had never, <sighs> It was something that I had never looked into, had never watched anything, but he had become so immersed in it. He was like, I really wanna do this. So I was a little bit against it at first, if I'm being honest, but he ordered all the equipment and started getting really into it last summer, learning how to dive, learning how to hold his breath. Then last year for his birthday, we bought him a spear gun so he could start trying to spear some fish. Then the boys started to show interest in it throughout the summer. So for Christmas, we got them their own free diving suit. And this summer they have started to learn how to free dive as well. So I was a little bit against it at first, just because Mark already has so many hobbies, but I see the value in it now. They really enjoy it. I'm grateful that the boys can join him now. It's not just a Mark activity. Um, they're not taking a camera along because when he takes the boys, sometimes it's tricky to film and try and keep everybody safe. But we'll see if they bring anything back. This is more of just an exploration. Cause wanna know if they got more fish? You have to see the next video. No, not the next video. <laughs> no, you don't have to watch a different video. We'll see if they bring kidding. anything back. Kidding, you don't. At some point in this week, we hope that they can go get some rock fish for some tacos. I'm getting into free diving too. Yeah, last trip here, Weston tried on Bennett's suit. Bennett has the smallest size suit that we can find right now that's thick enough for Alaska waters. So Weston's gotta keep growing and then he can get into it more and we'll just keep yes. moving the boys up suit sizes. And his eye float up like a, a tire in the water. The suits make you very buoyant. They make you float up on top of the water. So you will sometimes see that the boys are wearing weight belts. That is to allow them to dive down and not just sit on top of the water. It's essentially like they're wearing like a big life jacket when they wear those suits. I have some cool stuff like this, like this. Are these the treasures you found on our walk this morning? Probably like that. These are my treasures. I found sea glass. And some shells. Wait, a brown one's on the Always come home with a pocket full of treasures for every walk. You can see when we go walking that we often bring back things and then just the window sills are always filled with cool finds from the beach. This is a bird beak. The cool chiton, sand dollar. Some blue beach glass. Here's another bird beak. So all the windows tend to be covered. These ones are so cool with the, they look like a Ruffles potato chip. And this one has some things growing on it that were cool and really pretty on the inside. Let's get it in the light so you can see that. Look how blue this one is on the inside. We just all piled into our little Tobin Costco raft. We're gonna go for an evening cruise looking for bears along the beach and just having a little evening adventure before bed. No guns involved, we're just looking. Up at the river, probably. 
so we are up now at the head of the bay. This is where Seldovia Bay ends. There is a river up here. You can catch salmon and Dolly Varden. In the fall when the pink salmon are running up here, you can often see lots of bears. I think one time Mark and I were here, we were first married. We counted like 27 bears in a day or something while we were fishing up here for the day. So. I've never seen that many bears. The kids have never seen that many, but we spent the entire day fishing up at the head of the bay. And every time they saw us, they ran as fast as they could into the woods. None of them ever bothered us. So that was when we first got married, that showed me that bears here are more scared of us than we are scared of them. Very shallow here. We can see the bottom. Yep. There's a bunch of fish jumping, so Hunter couldn't pass up the opportunity to Okay. To reel it, okay. to try a few oh. casts. Sail off into the sunset. There's a sleeping sea otter ahead. We're gonna see if we can go see it. We're in a little cove. We are looking at this cool house on stilts here. some blueberry pancakes made with the blueberries we picked yesterday and then this is what we turn a lot of our blueberries into this beautiful blueberry syrup so good another day another spear fishing trip for mark and hunter this time they are headed out hopefully yesterday they got one small greenling Tonight we need rockfish for dinner, so they're hoping to go out and spear some rockfish and bring them home for our dinner. All right, bring us home some dinner. All right, we'll do it. We need some rockfish or a halibut. Oh, that would be awesome. Love you, hon. Be safe. We have really beautiful weather today. We gotta take advantage of it because I think it, we're supposed to get rain, maybe not tomorrow, but the next day. So we gotta. Make sure we spend our time outside today. So we used the blueberries for breakfast and Bennett just couldn't resist running back down the beach and picking some more for us to snack on today. So I am here on the porch picking out the leaves. All right, my hands are very purple from sorting blueberries. All right, so we like to collect sea glass when we're here at the cabin. It's actually on our list of things to do today is to go to our favorite sea glass beach. That's what we've named it. That's not the real name of it. And see if we can gather up some sea glass for some art projects. But while Mark and Hunter are off, we need something to do. So uh, Bennett wanted to make a sign for the new shower house. So I think we're going to try and make something out of some sea glass. My cookie's done. Your cookies are done? Oh, you painted a cookie? Can I see it? Oh, it's so nice. Beautiful. Good job. One of our favorite things we've done with our sea glass is we've made this layered thing. So our brown on the bottom, green, blue, and then one piece of red because that is very rare. Anyways, it's so pretty, but we are going to be dumping it out. We've got another jar here. Plus hopefully gathering some today to do some art. I got these picture frames and we are going to attempt to do some sea glass art in them for the cabin. So this became full-fledged art time. We've got, I'm working on this shower sign for the new shower house and then Everett made this one and it is called it's high tide no low tide. sorry low tide yeah low tide and then Westy I'm still working on gluing these 
So I'm just using E6000 glue and then we've kind of aren't using the glass in the picture frames. We're just putting and the glass in the back. So and then it is still making his. Yep. And you and mom have to make And then we'll her. go replenish the sea glass after this so that when the cousins come next week, they can, I bought them frames and they can do their own projects. All right, I am doing the meticulous work of putting Everett's low tide back together. He's built it on the glass, so I pulled it out carefully and I'm recreating it so that it's just what he made. He was very, very concerned that I was gonna have to take it apart to put it back together, but I'm doing my best to make it what he had envisioned. We made it back. It was kind of rough and I actually puked in the water when I was snorkeling, which is not fun, but we got some cool stuff. This is, I've never got one of these before. It's called a starry flounder. Pretty big one and I've never shot one of these before. And I think it'll make a good fish print. It's got this really cool textured scales. These like little stop, I don't know, little rough patches, sandpaper, so. This is what we were mostly after, these rockfish, these black bass rockfish. We didn't find, I didn't see very many, but we got this one and a couple more. And then I got a big kelp cool. greenling here. Okay. Hi. And then this is a kelp greenling here. So we got that guy. Oh, it'll but, make some good tacos. Yep, it'll be more than enough for dinner. Here are our sea glass creations. May have already showed you some of these, but Weston made a flower. They're all still drying. They take about 24 hours to dry. This one's called Low Tide by Everett. This is by Bennett. It's an octopus. And I made this beach one and put some other stuff we have from the beach on it. And then Bennett made this for the shower house. So we'll have to go and replenish the sea glass. We still have tons left. Here's our plate of sea glass. But we'll go and show you gathering some so that we can, Hunter can still make one if he wants to. And then we wanna make sure there's some for the cousins when they come next week. Last time we were here, the neighbors gifted us a little blue kayak in exchange for some king salmon. They said they weren't using it anymore. And so Bennett got the idea this trip to use it as a tow behind. They are wearing their wetsuits, so they're nice and warm. And they're having a ball. kids know how to have fun. Woo! I think the thing I love best about activities like this is the first time they did it, Bennett could barely make it a couple feet without just like totally falling. And then he figured out the way he needed to have his body and you could see him go for much longer. And then today he decided he needed a stick to hold on to so he could hold on longer. It's just kind of fun to see them problem solve through something like this. And then I actually just saw him standing up, kind of like wakeboarding <laughs> behind it. So they're having a good time. All right, that was Hunter going by and Bennett wants to show us his skills. He stood up, stood down, stood up again, and fell. Good job, Bennett. Oh. Well, Hunter came back in from spearfishing and playing out in the boat. We had lunch, and then you'll never guess what he made out of sea glass. A fish, a halibut, it looks so good. Thank you so much for those of you that gave this idea. I put a picture up of some just sea glass we just were playing with and rearranging and you said you should make art out of that. So I went and got the supplies. It was so much fun. So thank you. Thank you for that suggestion. And I think we're going to treasure these. I'm going to hang them I think in the bunkhouse. Um, and then We'll see what the cousins come up with when they come down. All right, we've had a ton of fun with sea glass today. We're actually gonna load up in the boat and go to our sea glass beach and see if we can restock some sea glass. Now that we used so much of it. Um, I was having fun. I didn't glue any of these down, but I was just making little things out of sea glass. Look at this cute little kitty, meow. Some plants. 
These all just look so pretty together. And then Bennett's shower sign is gonna be awesome. Still have all this sea glass. We're gonna put it back in the jar. Let's go see if we can find some more sea glass. All right, off on another adventure in our little Costco boat. The little, little tiny boat. Approaching what we have named Sea Glass Beach. Oh my goodness, my camera's all wet. Tell them what happens. Now we can see if there's more sea glass. Ben had already found a piece. Oh, he had to jump and find the first piece of sea glass. All right. Hunter, are you guys going fishing? You got one? Yep, I got one. So for some reason, this beach here has a much higher concentration of sea glass. We'll go for a really long walk and maybe find one to three pieces here. Let's see how many I can find if I just sit in one spot and look around me for just, you know, 30 seconds. Okay, well, we're gonna sit right here for just a second and see how many pieces I can find. One, two, three, four, Five. Can you open the bag? Six. Yeah. A lot. Six. Yeah, good job, Bev. How many people? Nine. Oh, wow. And the rocks here are super shimmery for yeah. some reason. I need to do some research about what's in them, but wow. Keep that. Yeah. That is amazing. Yes, I do. Oh, here's a piece. Oh, here's a piece. Oh, we are on the roll. Mark and Hunter are out there fishing. Hunter always has a fishing pole along. He's always got to see what he can catch. Good job. All the baby tide pools go in. Look at that anemone. All right, here, I just found a really, really nice piece of like green. Those are a little bit more rare. You never know what kid's gonna be into finding it with you this, but today is me and Everett. Look how many fish we have. Everett is teaching me how to tie knots with this monkey tail kelp. It's giving me a lesson. Yeah. Okay. And oh well, my that's goodness! A knot. Good. All right. Well, here is the sea glass we ended up with. Have you seen my rock? Come have you seen my rock? We got quite a bit for just and 30 minutes. So All right. This rock here is called camel. Is all the sea glass we have left after doing our project which means we didn't actually use that much of it but here is our bag from today let's do a little assessment here is our haul of sea glass quite a bit of brown and green white blue i find it kind of calming and therapeutic to find sea glass and also to sort it so that is our sea glass haul. <laughs> the boys are swimming. What are you up to? I'm filleting our fish for dinner. I'm gonna turn this into fish tacos. We are gonna make sure we do that fresh rockfish justice by making some fresh pico de gallo. I got tomatoes, I got cilantro. We're also gonna make some fresh guacamole. I got some limes, some green onion a jalapeno, and I've also got a white onion. I know it's been a while since we've done any cooking videos at home, but this thing right here is my favorite. I will put the link in the description below. It's my favorite chopper. I love it so much that I bought 
a second one to have here at the cabin because I cannot be without this chopper. I love how quick and easy it chops everything, but just make sure you don't ever touch these blades. They are so, 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 so sharp. Speaking from experience, but you just lock it in. When you need to wash it, use this brush and wash it from the back side and you're good to go. So let's make some yummy dips to go with these awesome tacos. When you have fresh fish, you just wanna make sure you do it justice, so. This even has measurements on the side, so if you're getting trying to get a, a certain amount of something, you can keep track there. Hey, can you grab me a, white, a yellow onion from up there? We've lost the fat. Look how nicely that chops everything into the bowl. Thank you. Are you going to leave the top? I don't want to see that. No, no I tried to do something with my hands. pants or shorts. Yes, please. Ooh, go get me some chips, sweetie. Oh, oh, don't put your fingers in there. That's dangerous. A little bit spicy. Barely even got it mixed up and I already have some takers. It's a little bit spicy. I didn't put the I didn't put the seeds in from the jalapeno, but it ends up a little bit spicy. Mark's over here chopping up my fish dinner. Alright, and I am taking some of that fresh pico and I'm gonna add it to avocado and make some guacamole. The feet of the animal. And There's hardly going to be any guacamole when dinner starts. These boys just like hit it so hard. <laughs> All right, we got our fish tacos, our pico, guacamole, spicy pico. Hunter's enjoying the spicy pico. Can I just see your beautiful taco before you eat it? <laughs> I kind of covered it up with uh, um, yeah. see all the fish there. Mark is going to do geotaku, is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. With yep. this arrow tooth flounder. This is sorry, not an a arrow starry tooth. flounder. I think it's a starry flounder. You can see by the different colors here and the fins, and then this really like sandpapery, abrasive skin. So, geotaku essentially means fish rubbing. It's a Japanese art form, and the first step is that you clean off all the slime. Well, Mark is doing this out on the deck. We've just had the most beautiful day. It's so calm and beautiful out. So. We just want to be out here. I am sorting blueberries. My hands are purple. Just getting all the leaves out. Look at that beautiful pot full of blueberries. I know, you just want to like eat them. We want to make some little campfire pies at some point with them, but I don't know. I just keep eating as many as I'm putting in the pot. They're so good. The next step is to put this Sumi ink on it. This is by no means a tutorial on how to do this. There are a lot of really good tutorials on how to do this really well on YouTube, but we're just doing this for the entertainment value. So he's putting this ink on, which is non-toxic, so we could eat this fish afterwards. This is kind of ink you'd use for calligraphy. Trying to paint the whole fish, all the different fins, and make sure everything's laid out how we want it. The next step is that you dab off most of the ink. This allows the texture to show through, but to still get a nice print.
If you want to see a video of us going fishing, catching multiple types of fish and making these fish prints, make sure to head on over to Mark's channel, Alaska Boys, and watch this video. It's the first time we ever made the fish prints and it was a lot of fun. So go check that out. That'll be fine. Oh, you can see that line right down the middle. That's yeah. cool. Last time when we did this, we had four very eager helpers. And so it was a little bit more stressful and they are watching a little movie right now. So we thought, hey, let's try it. Well, <laughs> it's not as busy out here. So cool. You got it? Yeah, I think so. Ooh, that is cool. There it goes right this way here. There we go. That is really cool. One cool thing about these fish prints is you can do the same fish over and over again, and it actually gets better as you do subsequent fish because the ink gets in the nicks and crannies. So Mark's gonna try it around two and see how it turns out. Okay. It's interesting, yeah, because it has a lot of those spots on its cheek, so it's like it doesn't show up. It's weird. I really thought that those spots would be what would show up, but it's the reverse. It's yeah. like the spots don't show up. But that makes it have a lot of texture still. I would, the fins are better on this one. Uh -huh. um, I don't think, I think they, it's cool and different. So last time we were at the cabin, after I left to drive home, Hunter was out halibut fishing and he caught a 70 pound halibut, which is the biggest one we've caught in a really long time. And the cool thing he did was he made a rubbing of the tail. Let me show you. Because the actual fish was too big to do a rubbing of. They filleted it, we ate it. It was a really cool way to memorialize this big fish that he caught. So he has it right up here on the wall. And it says Hunter Ham, July 2022, 70-pound halibut. Isn't that so fun? All right, Mark's going to try round three one more time. And I'm going to finish sorting these blueberries. And then I'm going to go take a shower. It's going to feel so good. All right, I did it. I sorted all the blueberries. Just a little bit of blueberry juice and some leaves left in there. I think I earned my shower. If you are new here, for the past 15 years that I have been coming to this cabin, and Mark ever since he was a little boy, when you want to get clean at the cabin, you have to heat up water on the stove and then take a bath in an old fashioned galvanized tub. It's actually this tub that's sitting right here. We've always drug it into the house, heated up water, shooed everybody out of the house, and taken a quick little sponge bath. And it's felt amazing, but it was a lot of work. So last time we were here, we got to show everybody that our brother-in-law, Ben, built this shower house. It has an on-demand water heater, a shower head. It gets really hot. And then back there up by the cabin, there's some really big water tanks that we collected all the runoff in the spring. And now we get to take hot showers. It's glorious. <clears throat> Good morning. It is 9 a.m. We are going on some forced family fun this morning. We're going on a fishing trip. Some children were more excited about it than others. I'm sure you can guess who. But 
this is probably the last time we are going to get to go fishing as a family this year because tomorrow the seas are supposed to get to like six to eight feet so we will not be going out tomorrow so today is our chance so we're heading out it is starting to rain but it looks pretty calm so hopefully it won't be too wavy giving dramamine to kids that might need it we haven't really taken dramamine much but we're giving it a try that is a motion sickness medicine if you're not familiar with that All right, let's get in the boat. Hello, Captain Everett. Um, oh. So I'm DJ. You're the DJ? All right. All right, first thing we have to do before we go fishing is get some gas in the boat. Mark called ahead on the radio, so there should be somebody there uh, to hand down the gas pump. All right, I think we'll do 15. 15? Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Watch out, Everett. She's going to pull that back up, okay? Okay. Oh, Help her. Okay, don't touch that part. Don't touch that part. Thank you for helping, Ev. Up, up, up it goes. All right, so we drove about 25 minutes out. The waves are a little bit bigger than we anticipated, but we are gonna try and troll, which is where you keep the motor running um, and move very slowly. And we're trying to catch salmon that are out in the ocean. So king salmon. These machines that Hunter is working with are called downriggers and they help you get your line down and out behind the boat to catch the salmon. And then you just drive really slowly. Yep. Going that way. One of my goals this summer was to practice driving the boat more, and I sure got a lot of chances to drive the boat this day. The downriggers. And it ends up being a bit wavier than we had planned. We tried trolling for a little while and didn't see many fish on the fish finder. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh, oh. It's a king. Okay. No, no, hey. Hunter, gotta keep it out of the. Here, here, you film, Bennett. I'll, I got, I got, I got. That's a king. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Bennett, Bennett, Bounder, you, know, you gotta get it closer. Go, uh, no, net it, net it, net it. Okay, uh, okay. Okay, scoop it, scoop it, scoop it, scoop it. Yes, 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 yes. Pull it up, pull it up. Pull oh my goodness. What? Holy yeah. cow. No. Oh my goodness. That's a big king. Oh, yes. Look, we, we might have one. I think we had a bite on that one. Uh. What is that? It's a kelp. Oh, it's a black bass. All right, we got a black bass. You got a little black bass. Hold it up so you can see it. Okay, Hunter, keep us out from the kelp. We just go straight out in front of Sildovia. We got back from fishing. The non-drowsy Dramamine knocked me out for the afternoon. I could not stay awake. I was chilled when we got home, had lunch, curled up in bed, fell asleep. After that, we've been having a rainy afternoon around the cabin. Um, I did do one more art project. I made this sign for the bunkie, kind of fun. Octopus and a halibut and some starfish and kelp. So I'm gonna go hang that in the bunkie when it dries. And we are going to make some dinner. As you probably saw, we did catch a king salmon out in the ocean. So we're gonna have that for dinner and some clam linguine, which is a recipe from one of you. This clam linguine recipe was sent to us by Michelle August. Thank you for sending that to us. Um, I can't do it exactly because I didn't get all the right ingredients, but it gave me inspiration for a different meal than we've had before. Mark and I went and got these clams this spring. We harvested them and then we came home and canned them. Go check out our clam video over on the Alaska Boys YouTube channel. Okay, I harvested these zucchinis and this squash out of our garden before I left. I'm also gonna add these to the pasta. Not all of them, but some of them. I have the zucchini and onions. I'm gonna add the clam juice. Mm. 
you know it's a good fish when all that oil is dripping down and catching fire. I'm gonna add in my clams and then let this simmer. Got our pasta simmering. Sorry, Michelle, I feel like I am butchering your recipe. Like I said, every, <laughs> the further I got down the list, the real, I realized the more things I was missing, but thank you for the inspiration at least. I'm sorry I'm butchering your recipe. I will put the original recipe down in the description below. So I ended up adding some cream because I had it with us. It almost is like a creamy clam chowder, but it tastes excellent. Just waiting on the noodles. Mark's bringing in this salmon and it just has lemon pepper on it. And it tastes amazing. Fresh caught out of the ocean today. It's just so good. Hard to beat. Fresh, fresh, fresh fish. All right. Salmon and clam yeah, linguine. Bon appetit. Bennett is mixing up some sugar with the blueberries he picked yesterday to make some blueberry pies. pies. Using some white bread and these little cast iron and blueberry. Making some campfire pies yeah. in the fireplace. <laughs> Good morning, friends. We have a very foggy, rainy day here at the cabin. Look out the window. You can barely see town. I might be able to help. I thought I could help. Sometimes the window can get really foggy. Yeah, it's not the window that's foggy this time. It's just the fog outside. So Mark and the older three boys took off on a little fishing adventure to the head of the bay. I don't think they took a camera, but they're gonna be up there for a couple hours. In the rain, we need to pick blueberries today. Mark has been looking at all the different weather charts. We're trying to decide if we need to leave tonight or if we can still leave tomorrow as planned. This is when things get tricky. When the weather turns bad and it gets really wavy, we're not sure if the ferry is gonna be running. Mark needs to be able to fly. So we are watching the weather very closely today to know when to go home. Oh, a little bit stressful, but. Mom, let's take a picture. Take a picture? Yeah, then no, hey, no of the weather. So we remember okay, what the mess. Take a picture so we remember what? The uh, weather. Okay, there's the weather. <coughs> Rainy, cold, and foggy. Yep. Well, if you don't like the weather, sometimes it pays off to just wait a few minutes. Because it was so rainy, I decided to do a little bit of editing. And I looked up and this was the weather. Very different than this morning. That is the crazy thing about the cabin and being here on the water. The weather can change so quickly. One time we were leaving to get home and we didn't have the boat in the water anymore. And our neighbor was taking us over to town. And we were, it was like this, it was dead calm. It was beautiful. And we're like, why are we leaving? We should be staying here. And within 15 minutes, there were like five to eight foot waves right here in the bay. And it was terrifying getting across. So you just never know when the weather is going to change. We do our best to track the weather and make the best decisions possible. But sometimes it changes really quickly, just like an hour and a half ago. It was socked in here and now it's gorgeous and sunny. I hope the boys took enough water with them on their little fishing adventure. The sunshine was a bit deceiving. We came out to play on the beach and I had to go put on my jacket and hat. The wind is blowing so hard down there and the clouds are just whipping by. It, the, the wind must be just blowing over these mountains. I'll show you because it just was deceiving. The sun is nice and warm, but if you're in the wind, it's a bit chilly. The boys just got home from the head of the bay. They said it was just whipping them and blowing so hard, but they did catch a lot of Dolly Varden and some, found some salmon. We were expecting to be bundled up in rain gear all day today, so I feel like the sunshine is just a bonus. Let's go. Sounds like a lot of craziness out here. Okay. Now you're a catcher. Woo! I can do that. Let's see. Westy's on his favorite swing. Bennett 
gathered up stuff for berry picking. This is very, he's expecting us to get a lot. We come down the beach, our kind neighbors have said we can pick berries. Up to this point, we've been picking them and eating them all. This time we're picking to store away for the winter to make blueberry syrup, blueberry juice, all sorts of good things. So we're, our kids ran ahead. So now we gotta go find them. How's it going, Hunter? Oh, good. Is that your bucket? I have a baseball. Uh, yeah. I have a baseball. Nice. Here, come over. How's it going, Bennett? We're gonna have to build a bat. Oh my goodness. You got a lot. How's it going, hon? Good. Going well. A few. I keep. I've already unloaded a couple times. All right. I was 100% planning on picking berries in the rain, so. This is very nice and pleasant. <laughs> okay, let's line up. Hands and mouth check. Why? Walk away. No, I can't stop. So many good ones. I'm just eating them. Okay, hands out. Oh, we got some purple hands. <laughs> Not that much. Mine are sappy. Oh, oompa loompa. And mouths. Purple mouths. Oh, the worst. The oh my goodness. <laughs> you can tell we enjoyed some blueberries while we picked. Oh my goodness. We ended up with almost a five gallon bucket full. Heavy. But not bad work for about an hour of picking. Uh, Everett, are you enjoying this hot sand? Yeah. And I made a sandcastle. You made a sandcastle? Yeah. There you go. That was a good one. So as we're walking back to the cabin after picking blueberries, I'm going to show you what Mark called the fancy cabin when he was growing up. This cabin has sadly seen better times. Uh, over the last 10 years, we've watched it just deteriorate and get buffeted by the ocean. Nobody has really been here. We've only seen one person here in the last 10 years come and try and give it some effort. But this last winter, this whole section right here fell into the ocean. And so it is just wide open now, unfortunately. When we get back down to the cabin, I will show you what the hams have done over the years to try and keep the ocean back away from the cabin and keep the cabin safe for as many years as possible. Okay, starting way over here at the property line, you can see that the hams have built up these rock walls using nets. They create like little purses, sew in the rocks, and then create another layer on top and build them on top of each other. You can see right here they've kind of had to do some stitching and fixing them up. In the spring, Grandpa Bill came along and put all this beach grass down to try and keep the nets as long as possible because they erode with the ocean water and the sunshine. So over the years, they have built these walls. They've built these rock walls. They've added vegetation into it. They'll pick these plants and plant them in there. Anything that they can do to make this wall last as long as possible. Especially in the winter, there are huge storms that will come and buffet this area and would pop. And I'm sure water gets up and by the cabin, even having this wall. So they're just doing their best to keep this beach from eroding away. About every other summer, we will do a big project and fix a part of the wall that has fallen down, gather up big rocks from down lower and put them back up here. It's a constant project, but it's one that we hope will keep the cabin around for a really, really long time. So if you've ever wondered, this is their little man-made wall here in front of the cabin. Now we have the job of getting the leaves out of the blueberries. Luckily we have this wind to help us. Mark has his, Mark has a way that he likes to do this. Usually we have to fan the blueberries, but because we have this wind, we're gonna use that to our advantage and try and get most of the leaves out.
take off like a bird with that eagle feather. Let's go. Let's go. We're going to go out of a corner here. All right, we're going to do a round two. See if we can get the majority of the leaves out of there. You doing the blueberry dance? Okay, one more round. Go higher, higher up. That way it has more. Yeah. Pretty good. There's a few leaves in there, but not look, nowhere near what there were before. A lot of the ones here are berries with the leaf on them to attach like that. Well, we usually have to make our own wind to make that work, but not today. That was incredible and a fun. Everybody had fun doing it. Now we get to package them all up to take home. So now we're just getting a tray full and we'll pick out any of the last little leaves that are here. And then once that's all clean, we're putting them into Ziploc bags to take home and put in the freezer. And then we check blueberry picking off our list for the fall. To get ready for dinner today, we are grilling up the other half of one of these Trollcock Kings we got. And it is just awesome. So looking down at that King, you can see, so you see flames are, are, are coming up on the grill there. And normally when you cook salmon, there's no flames coming up because there's not enough oil and grease. But these Trollcock King salmon are really oily and super flavorful. So here's all our hard work. Packaged up, ready to take home, put in the freezer. My hands are for sure dyed purple for the next probably 48 hours. I love that feeling of getting a job done from start to finish. So we picked the berries, we've got them packaged away. That's good. Now it's time to move on to dinner. I had on the menu halibut sandwiches. We didn't end up catching any halibut this trip, but we did catch a king. Yes, my teeth are so purple. I should be embarrassed, but I haven't even looked at myself in the mirror. I can actually, I can see a little reflection in my camera. I know they're that bad. We're gonna have it tonight as salmon patties since we didn't get any halibut. So I don't think we've ever made salmon patties before. It seems like a very Alaskan thing to have, um, but we don't really usually eat our salmon that way. So since we have the buns, we're gonna make salmon patties. Ooh, this king salmon looks amazing. So typically when we catch king salmon, it's once they've left the ocean after two to three years and made their way back to their spawning grounds in a river. Well, this is an ocean caught king. So it's not as old as the other ones. And they seem to have a lot of like that good omega fats in them. And so good. Yes, yesterday's salmon just like melted in your mouth. All right, Mark got the salmon off and he says it's just like so good. eating butter. Mm, so good. It's so rich and oily. In a good way. You've also been eating the fish skin and it almost just like tastes like a jerky. I've never really been one to eat fish skin, but Mark said I had to try it. And it's actually really good. Just salt and pepper. It's just salt and pepper. That's it. Wow. That's it. That's like how good it is, you know? Oh, wow. That even just with salt and pepper. Damn. Mmm. So good. My hands look so dirty. It's all the blueberries. <laughs> Excuse us just eating with our fingers. But <laughs> oh, that's so good. It really is. It just like melts in your mouth. It's some of the best I've ever had. It really is. All right, to the salmon, I'm gonna add some breadcrumbs. This is gonna have it stick together a little bit. A little bit of this dill mix. I could get a lot of this. We have a bunch. You wanna just add some of that? egg well there's a whole well, I guess there's another box of panko but fingers crossed All 
right, I mixed up a little bit of mayonnaise, lime juice, all-purpose dill mix. I'm gonna try that on the salmon burgers. I think they're gonna be really yummy. We also have some avocado sliced up, tomato, lettuce, and some buns. Some that looks very tomato. fancy. Bon appetit! That's good. That's good. Mm. Mm. Please try and just put it a little bit. Okay. It feels very fancy with the Next avocado the and the falls, you can catch it. tomato. Very yummy. Do you like them? What? I think how much is left on the plate is the answer. Yeah. No talking. Oh. There's a first time for everything. Last time people asked if we ever get sick of salmon and halibut and moose meat and stuff. The true answer is this. We just there's so many ways we haven't tried it that sometimes it's tempting to say you're sick of something, but there's so many recipes left to try. So. This was a this was a winner. Yeah. You like it? And it's middle na uh, nickname is Krabby Patty. Krabby Patty. We're having some Krabby Patties. All right. No, that's his nickname. The nickname. All right. Yeah. So when next time you want it, say, Mom, I want some Krabby Patties. Okay. Always something to keep us busy here at the cabin. Okay. Here you go. Right down the middle there. Careful. Practicing our jumping skills. Well, friends, all good things must come to an end. We're packing up to head home. All right, we are in the process of packing up, but if you've ever wondered about the bed situation, there's a full bed in here. We always bring the grill inside so that it doesn't attract animals, bears, things that might want to come and smell what's been cooking. Hey, Weston. Up here, I already took all the sheets off the bed. We have to take the sheets home to clean them. So, and then we just bring them back with us. No real way to do laundry here. So, in case you've wondered, so here's a bed here. There's a bed here. King size bed here. And a bed over there. So, this trip we had Hunter, Mom, Dad, Weston, Everett, and then Bennett chose to take the room downstairs. So, that's the sleeping arrangement. And then we have the bunkie outside if we have multiple families here at a time. There's also quite a bit of floor space up here if we need somebody to just have a cot on the floor and we have a pack and play for babies or little ones. But we are out of that stage this year for the first time. Bennett and I have a 45 minute boat ride and then a four to five and a half hour car ride home ahead of us. Mark has a two hour airplane flight. We're just finishing cleaning up here in the cabin. Thank you so much for spending a week with us at the cabin. If you want to know more about the cabin, make sure you watch this video that's popping up right here. We are so grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you again real soon for more of this Alaska life. And bye cabin. This is our last trip to the cabin for the year. So this time it hits a little differently. We're pulling away. Bye, cabin.